Hi, my name is Jim and I was retired. In this week's video, I'm going to introduce a new sample portfolio by buckets spreadsheet. Stay tuned. Last month, when I did the review of the Physician on Fire net worth tracker, uh, I used uh, my old portfolio by buckets spreadsheet as a end note to say, you might want to try this. Well, in looking at it, I realized it's come a long way since I first uh, shared that with you. And the one I use now is a lot more detailed. And so over the last few weeks, I've been trying to beef up the spreadsheet that I've shared. Now, if you recall this video, translating numbers spreadsheets into Excel and cheats is pretty frustrating. So what I'm going to share with you is what I've done and posted up as a sheets spreadsheet. And I've had to make some modifications to my approach in numbers and then translate it. It kind of works. Not as well as my original numbers spreadsheet, but it kind of works. So I'm going to share it with you and I'll show you how it works. If you want to download it, you'll go to my Google Sites, I'll show you in a minute, and make a copy, download it into an Excel spreadsheet format for Excel or another software, or make a copy into your Google Sheets on your Google Drive. That's the way that you'll use the free software that I have to share. Let's take a look. So this is my Google site that I created to share links and uh, spreadsheets. And the front page shows my most recent YouTube channel uh, videos. Um, but the most important thing is to go over to the resources page here and look at the links and spreadsheets. For instance, here's the links. And if you go to that physician's heal thyself down here, you'll jump to the links that I shared. If you want the spreadsheets, go to the spreadsheets. And in this case, each one is a little block of content. And I've put this new sample portfolio by bucket spreadsheet at the very top of the page, right above the spreadsheet that I shared in episode 90, the video in December. To access the spreadsheet, you're going to go over to this and you're going to click this little gray box here, and it's going to open the spreadsheet in a Google Sheets format. Now, this is just a view only. To work with it, you're going to want to Download it here into an Excel spreadsheet or make a copy. We're going to go make a copy here. I just want you to look at it. Then I'm going to jump over to my numbers version of this on my uh, hard drive to show you a better looking view of it. But let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to make a copy. It's going to say a copy of the new sample portfolio by bucket. So on my drive, it's going to be your individual Google Drive. Uh, you're going to make a copy. This is now a copy that I can edit uh, on my Google Drive. Um, it's separate from the one that you'll find shared on my Google Sites. You'll see that it includes the dummy data that I created here. And I will tell you that if you want to import your data, you're going to have to be careful. You're going to want to put it in between rows 9 and uh, 66. And hopefully you have fewer assets and fewer accounts than this one does. Uh, and then you'll delete the extra rows and you'll delete it in this sheet here, the Google, uh, the Quicken Values Here uh, sheet but you'll also need to then correspondingly delete the rows that no longer apply in this next sheet and the three bucket sheet. And you'll actually see them show up as reference 
we don't know where to look because it's missing it in the first sheet. But you'll need to adjust that carefully if you want to do it in Google Sheets, work according to Google Sheets rules, which means that you'll need to double check all the formulas because in numbers, if I did that, the formulas automatically adjust, but in sheets, they don't. Likewise, if you download an Excel, now I, I don't have Excel on my hard drive, you gotta be careful and go over the formulas for each of the uh, counts below to make sure they actually work. So let me give you a quick tour of it in sheets and then I'll go over to numbers. Here's the values of all the assets as if I downloaded it from Quicken and pasted it here. And again, this is all dummy data, uh, but it gives you a sense of how the spreadsheet works. Then all allocations, if you'll notice, copies the Quicken value here, and that does that throughout all of these. And then for asset class, you begin with the asset class that was on the Quickens, but you need to make an adjustment for each of those to make sure they're, they're using the asset classes that you want to use in your asset allocation. In this new and approved version, I have more asset classes, including CDs, cash, I-bonds, tips, and treasury bills. So they're greater uh, specificity in the kinds of assets, particularly in the domestic bond category. I've divided it up into those government type bonds versus other domestic bonds. I, I've included and left in an ac asset mixture uh, as I had in my old sample. Uh, and again, this would be like a Wellington or Wellesley income fund with a split of fixed income and equity. And those formulas over here work. Uh, this all comes down with an overall assigning the allocation, accounting for that asset mixture into these counts. Now in these, it's using sum if in tabulating each of these asset classes and that comes down here, um, adds them together, and gets you the current allocation. Um, and then that comes down here to a overall equity fixed income mix. And here's where you put your target uh, allocation, and this shows you the amount of dollars that you need to move. If you move these dollars, you'll get to this 60-40 uh, asset allocation here. And then three buckets, again, uses the same Quicken data in another format. It adds in these two rows here for time bucket and tax bucket, along with the same asset class that was on the prior sheet. And that gives you an overall view of the asset allocation within each time bucket and within each tax bucket. For this version, I had to divide it so that the charts show up on separate sheets because pie charts kept disappearing when I did that. Some of the frustration of, of things. But these are the charts that show up for the time buckets and then the tax buckets. Now I'm gonna jump over to my numbers because it's a little cleaner view of it. And you'll have the ability in your own spreadsheet to refine the rows, the titles, the graphs. But it requires a little skill in terms of the, sh the, the spreadsheet that you use. If you use Google Sheets, get familiar with how to format the charts in Google Sheets. If you use Excel, get familiar with how to, to customize the charts the way you want them to look. I know numbers, so let me show you what I think they should look like. So this is that data in a numbers file. And if you see uh, the tabs at the numbers thing are all at the top. So allocations is here. It shows you the near 50-50 split down here with this pie chart here. And then the three buckets, 
the sheet again is mostly data here. Um, it does have this little chart down here in the three buckets that shows you how much you'll have to adjust volumes in your three time buckets. And for instance, on this data, you need to move about 30,000 right now into bucket one to, to hit where you should be for your ideal uh, asset allocation across time buckets. Also, um, if you go to allocations over here, in addition to the uh, how to adjust your allocations, I have this little CAGR calculator that I've shared in other spreadsheets. I moved it into this one, and this includes a way of calculating your CAGR. Now for this sample data, it's showing a CAGR over the past 6.69 years of about 4.81. I will tell you that my real data is somewhere between five and a half and six. The skinning down, the dummying up the data changed numbers to, to show that a 4.8 CAGR. But that's a annual return a compounded annual growth rate of 4.81 from this initial 1.5 million to the current value of this sheet, accounting for the expenses each year over those uh, six plus years. So that's how CAGR works. It's a great way of looking at results as opposed to an annual rate of return, which last year, was terrible. The charts for the time buckets in numbers look like this. Shows you the asset allocation across the time bu buckets. It shows you the pie chart breakdown of the three time buckets. And then it shows you taxable, tax deferred, and tax free. So the time buckets by tax buckets. And likewise, the three tax bucket chart shows you here's the pie chart of all assets in the retirement portfolio, the tax-free, taxable, and tax-deferred buckets, the asset allocation of those three tax buckets, and then those tax buckets by time buckets. This also includes bucket one, look at asset class and tax bucket for bucket one, two pie charts to show the bucket two, and two more to show bucket three. Then this, this is the bucket chart that I've shared in previous videos that shows the asset allocation within those tax and time buckets. And then finally, asset allocation, which is, these are 100% bar charts so that you get a sense of the, um, uh, the split. This kind of shows from this, this data uh, began with about a 53, uh, 46 uh, asset allocation at the beginning of the year and has now worked closer to a 50-50. In my own case, I started out close to that 46 overall and uh, I'm about... Uh, 55 now in my current asset allocation, um, working towards the 60-40 that I want in my retirement. So this is my spreadsheet. Um, you're free to download it. Keep in mind, I am not a financial professional. I am not a financial planner. I am not an accountant. I'm barely a spreadsheet designer. So please take these as entertaining ideas from one educated consumer to another. So that's my overview of the new sample portfolio by buckets spreadsheet. It includes a closer look to the spreadsheet that I'm currently using for my own real data, uh, including some of the improvements that I have made to it in the, the last year or so. Take a, a good look at your data and see if this spreadsheet will work at looking at your asset allocation overall and within your time buckets and your tax buckets. I'll be back with non-spreadsheet content next week. See you next time.